Thank you for the opportunity to share with you today our work at George Washington University. We'd like to tell you about a library ecosystem which has developed organically since we first shared this work with CNI in 2013. This program may be unique in certain ways and it's serving as a rich source of research data for researchers not only at our institution but beyond as well. My name is Laura Rubel and I'm a software development librarian and I'm joined by my colleague Dan Kirshner. Hi, I'm Dan, and I am a software developer and librarian as well at GW Libraries. Um, as Laura mentioned, we first presented this work to you at CNI seven and a half years ago, actually, and a lot has happened since then. What now is an entire suite of resources, systems, and services at GW Libraries began initially as a small tool to help a faculty member avoid manually having to cut and paste tweets from the Twitter web interface. So as word spread, we began helping other researchers at GW. And uh, the more that the word spread, we realized that we needed to be better able to scale the service we were providing to help collect data on behalf of researchers. So with the help of grants from IMLS, NHPRC, and the Council on East Asian Libraries, we rebuilt the social fee manager tool with more of a self-service interface. Now, several years later, we've realized that we needed to add consultations to help each new researcher refine their research question, learn how to use our systems and uh, refine their data collection strategy. And we've added recurring workshops about collecting and working with social, feed, social media data and in fact, as we'll show you, some of our work with faculty and students has led to more in-depth research consultations and even external collaborations. And finally, we realized that uh, we needed an, another system to facilitate access to and subset data sets that we've already uh, collected. And so we have now tweet sets for that. And we've taken some of those data sets and published them on Dataverse. So another view of our um, whole ecosystem, which by the way also includes the ability to collect from a few other platforms, Tumblr, Flickr, and Sina Weibo. Um, and here are some researchers. And uh, we're gonna describe now some of the components of this system. So starting with the social feed manager, social feed manager, we'll call it SFM, is a web application that we created uh, at the beginning of this whole process. This is the, the more self-service version of it to allow users to create data sets uh, using the Twitter API, but without having to actually do the programming. Um, and we created it um, for users within our institution. Now here we're looking at a sample view from inside SFM where a user might specify the Twitter accounts, hashtags, et cetera, that they wanna collect from. And when, where the user can then download the data after it's been collected. So we did develop SFM at GW and we're describing the role it plays in our ecosystem that includes um, other systems as well for researchers who can get the data even without using SFM, like through tweet sets. Um, but SFM is also for researchers beyond GW as well through the social feed manager, the, the social media data that uh, is collected using SFM. Um, and in fact, SFM is being run at other institutions. The code for SFM is open source on GitHub and as other institutions around the world have started to run SFM for their projects, we're actually starting to see code contributions from developers and projects at other institutions. So to, we use two main platforms to facilitate access to data sets that we as librarians have collected and opted to make available. So TweetSets is one of those platforms and it allows users to derive subsets from those data sets that we collected. For users on the GW campus network, 
uh, tweet sets allows users to download the full data of the those subsets that they would derive. So we're looking at images here from a screen where they might select the source data sets that they want to work with, and then where they you, uh, select parameters for their own subset, perhaps like a date range or matching certain terms, things like that. So um, users that are not on the GW network can still access this uh, resource, but they would only be able to download the tweet identifiers. So it's like one identifier for each tweet. And then they would need to use a tool um, such as one of the free tools out there to rehydrate the IDs, which means requesting the full data for e that corresponds to each tweet identifier from Twitter directly. Um, and Twitter will provide that back to them if the tweet is still posted. So for a smaller set of our data sets, we've chosen to also publish those data sets on Harvard Dataverse where again, um, users would only get the identifiers, but many people are finding those useful as they go and rehydrate those data sets. So um, there's no subsetting available on Harvard data sets, uh, Harvard Dataverse rather, but Dataverse offers uh, pre preservation features and also Dataverse generates a DOI, a digital object identifier so that if a data set is used in research, it can be properly cited. And we are in fact seeing citations of our data sets in published research. So between these two platforms, tweet sets and Dataverse, um, we are able to provide access to data sets that we've created and enable them to reach a much wider audience. So now that we understand what role social feed manager plays in doing the actual collection and tweet sets and Harvard Dataverse in facilitating access to those collected data sets, we can map out a data flow where social feed manager is the, the um, component that's, that's um, interacting directly with Twitter, the source of all the data and we as librarians use social feed manager to cr create collections, but as mentioned, we, uh, we, have, we invite students, faculty, and researchers within GW to create their own collections on social feed manager, and they can download the data from their collections at that point in the flow. For the collections that we as librarians have collected, we post some of those, the ones that we feel would be of interest, uh, on tweet sets where users can derive subsets. And if they're on the GW network, they can download the full data sets. If they're not, they can still download the um, identifiers. And then from the data sets that we post on tweet sets, a subset of those we've chosen to publish on Harvard Dataverse. Um, and of course, that's just the identifiers, but we get a, a digital object identifier on there. And we're seeing plenty of public usage and Laura will talk about that more as well. We meet with uh, each researcher uh, as part of their entry into using Social Feed Manager, if, if that's what's needed or tweet sets. Um, we conduct workshops and we've actually been invited to guest lecture several times in GW courses, including first year university writing programs on topics like fandom, audience in the age of new media. Uh, we've been, uh, we've spoken to data analytics and text mining courses because they find uh, social media data to be excellent data sets for learning those techniques. We've lectured in political science uh, courses and of course, other services that we provide are helping with research collaborations. So a little bit about the nature of the, um, the content that we collect. So here you see a, a variety of topics. We, um, we have a, our largest set right now is on the coronavirus, tweets related to that. Uh, we we um, make a point of consistently collecting from major elections in the US and government accounts, um, something that it's sort of an emphasis at GW being in, in DC. Um, events such as hurricanes, 
and, and other events that uh, we've found to be of, of interest to our researchers. Now, there are more sets that you can view on uh, the tweet sets application, which we'll, we'll have a link at the end. And this is only what we as librarians have chosen co to collect. The, we have a, a very thorough list of all of the different topics that our students and faculty and researchers just at GW are collecting, and it's quite diverse. To get a picture of the usage of Social Feed Manager and our data sets and, and how they've been used, we've been tracking usage with several approaches. We keep a running spreadsheet of GW SFM usage, and we're seeing usage across campus departments from business, international affairs, computer science, religion, even the med school. So we know we're reaching campus broadly across disciplines. This tracking of support and interactions also helps us share support responsibilities as a team. So this is a screenshot from TweetSets and TweetSets keeps statistics about the source data sets downloaded and the data set format. So whether it was a CSV or tweet IDs and also by on-campus network versus non-GW users. Some of the data sets that have been the most popular are the news outlets data set, uh, coronavirus data set, um, and climate change tweets, as well as uh, numerous elections data sets. And we've recently added Google Analytics to tweet sets to get a better sense of how people are finding it and where they are in the world. This is a, an example of one of our data sets up on the Dataverse platform, the data repository where we've posted tweet ID data sets and it automatically collects usage, uh, dis, uh, download usage statistics, which is helpful at a high level and understanding reach. While we don't have any more detailed usage from Dataverse, we do get roughly weekly emails from someone who's come across the data sets and has a follow-up question. Sometimes they're requesting access to the full tweets, which we can't share under Twitter terms of service, but other times the questions are about the collection criteria, the collecting process or gaps in the data, wondering when we might be next updating the data sets. So while we provide a lot of this kind of information in the data, set description, data set users often want some further context. We, we've heard mostly from grad students and faculty from around the world. So Netherlands, Germany, South Korea, Australia. The point I want to make is that posting data sets is not the end of the process. You should expect to provide further support and communication. What's been particularly interesting is tracking how the data sets um, support published research. So these are some example citations uh, for some recent research published by GW faculty or researchers. Sometimes we hear directly from GW researchers that they've been successful in their work um, getting it published. Other times we come across the research much later after our interaction um, as their work has made it through that publication pipeline. And these are some example citations of work by researchers beyond GW who use one or more of the data sets we posted. Uh, because we don't usually hear from those beyond GW uh, making use of Dataverse or TweetSets data sets, we monitor for publications that mention our site, our data sets. So we have a few Google alerts going on some relevant keywords and also periodically do some database searching. And this is all fed into a group Zotero library. You're probably aware that researchers aren't always consistent in how they cite data sets. And so this kind of tracking has a, a manual aspect to it and does require some time and effort. However, understanding the reach of SFM and our data sets helps us and our leadership be informed as we discuss this program and decide what resources to put toward it. It also pays off in being able to have a better understanding of where topical interest in the data sets is and what we might collect in the future. Finally, it also makes the point that this data is proving to be reusable. We know that it's being adopted by researchers here at our institution and worldwide. Because we meet with most users of Social Feed Manager, we get to participate in their initial planning of their project. So we're supporting researchers early in their work as they're considering where and how to get their data, um, as they're thinking about which research questions they might pursue and, and how they might do their analysis. 
Well, while some of the faculty who use SFM are experienced social media researchers, others are new to working with Twitter data. So they may find SFM useful for exploratory research, um, trying out methods and data that are, that are newer to them. Students who are looking for social media data are often working on uh, capstone papers or dissertations or undergrad honors theses. So they're digging into this data for often a multi-semester project and, and learning some new methods as well. It, it's been great to position the library early in this process. Um, it's also opened the door to participating more deeply in research on campus. So as an example, um, Dan has been involved in work to analyze hate speech and tweets by candidates for US Congress. Um, also a project to analyze the claim that COVID-19 was a misinfodemic um, by looking at URLs in tweets about COVID. So he facilitated data workflow around this large data set, um, collaborated on data analysis coding in R and Python, including the data visualizations, and was a co-author on the paper. And we've also been part of conversations uh, and work by the Program on Extremism and the Institute for Data Democracy and Politics here at GW. I was recently involved uh, in helping an American studies professor track the origin of a Facebook meme that you see on the left there, um, relevant to the argument of her paper. So she connected up with the library because of our social media consultation service. I worked with her to use reverse image search, uh, web archives, and social feed manager to confirm some Tumblr metadata around the meme. So it turns out the origin of this meme was Tumblr, not Facebook. And the faculty member was then able to speak to the, the woman who originally created the meme and interview her about it. So it was a really interesting research support activity that came out of our involvement uh, in this space. There's a broader social media data community that includes librarians, archivists, developers, and social media researchers. Um, our developing some expertise in the library in this area has also provided an opportunity to share with that professional community beyond GW. So we provided um, workshops through the IMLS Laura Bush 21 funded project, uh, SEDWARC or Continuing Education to Advance Web Archiving uh, and given some webinars for the Digital Preservation Coalition in the UK. The Archives Unleashed project is doing amazing work to develop platforms and educational resources for web archives users. And we've contributed some data sets to past uh, datathons that they've run. And the DocNow community is made up of people from all facets of social media archiving and research. They're doing great work leading development of software and other resources to support ethical approaches to this work. So providing both the tools to collect social media data and the services to help users be successful working with the data has led to some benefits to campus researchers and the library. For campus researchers, most obviously they get the data they need for research questions from a range of disciplines. They get access to otherwise unavailable free historical data. We're opening up access to data to users of all technical backgrounds. So regardless of the role of their university, whether at the university, whether they're first years, grad students or faculty, um, SFM and tweet sets help them um, get data from, um, from these APIs. Students get this hands-on experience learning about data collection considerations and faculty now have data sets easily available for teaching data skills to students. And then finally, faculty can move into research areas that may otherwise have been difficult to, to pursue. For the library, um, this work really positions the library in a unique way in the university environment as a data creator and as a data publisher. So we're modeling good practices around publishing data that is well documented and supports reproducibility and other fair principles. So the, the data is findable, accessible, and in common formats expected by researchers such as um, CSV. We're leading in collecting data sets of cultural value. As events of significance occur, whether it's an election or a natural disaster or a campus event. And archivists and special collection librarians are, are key partners in this work. Social media data comes with important privacy and ethical considerations. 
And we embed these concerns in our conversations with students and faculty. So the library becomes part of this conversation on campus around data ethics and privacy. Librarians and developers get firsthand experience and involvement with research support using larger data sets and helping the organization build relationships in this area on campus. So this work really can lead to opportunities for library staff to become further or more deeply involved in research projects support grant funded research on social media data and use our related skills working with data as partners in these kinds of projects. So this type of work also has its challenges. We are a small team of three developers essentially. Um, and with several other software development projects responsibilities and things like teaching workshops being available for research consulta consultations and other responsibilities. So we find that all the activities that we've described associated with assisting researchers at GW with using SFM, tweet sets, and then of course the data itself that they get through those systems takes time and effort, not to mention that we receive those inquiries from external researchers about our data sets and about the software. Um, and uh, although the bulk of our time is, is as it probably should be focused on serving our immediate community of GW researchers, um, it's still quite uh, time intensive. So if you go to our GitHub repositories for SFM and for tweet sets, you'll see that we have plenty of tickets for feature enhancements, fixes and other issues. Software maintenance may not be flashy um, and it takes time and, and dedication, but it's an ongoing necessary investment for us to be able to continue to provide the support and data to the many researchers who depend on us. With not only the software man, uh, maintenance, but especially with the services we provide, ensuring that the work and time entailed are both visible and measurable can be difficult. We spend considerable time, as Laura described, keeping records of exactly who we help and with what project. But even that's more of a, uh, a list and still hard to quantify in terms of the hours spent providing that value. So Laura also described what we do to try to capture the end effect and impact of our assistance in terms of research output. But many of the projects that we support don't ultimately turn into pu publications that we can cite but we still contributed to the education of the students that we work with. So although we, for our part as data providers, do our best to educate the users, uh, at least the ones that we're in contact with about appropriate use of social media data, we've still had to ensure that the overall activity of providing the service and collecting these social media data sets is something that our institution is comfortable with from a legal, and policy standpoint, given the privacy uh, issues involved inherent to the uh, to social media data. So the um, another consideration is the fact that uh, the Twitter API is evolving. So that evolution provides both opportunities with any new affordances um, that are coming out, but also we have to keep up with changes that might impact the parts of the API that we're already using. And then um, an important consideration is the fact that tweet sets itself with its ability to, for a user to generate um, custom subsets of each data set um, can be quite computationally intensive. The data sets are very large and um, generating subsets from each one can, can take hours or and in some cases even a day or two. So we've made some improvements, but um, we're providing that as a public service that reaches even beyond GW. And we need to balance, of course, the, the value of providing that public consideration with the fact that those um, it's provided on a, a limited resource on our infrastructure for free. So in terms of um, some, some ideas, a few ideas at least for future directions, um, <clears throat> especially over the past year, we've started to 
really see uh, more interest from software developers from a few other institutions using SFM already, um, propose pr improvements and submit pull requests um, for the SFM software. And some of them have expressed their willingness to participate in a potential community software development sprint. We've been part of sprints like that for other open source software. And we feel that that model where other adopters of SFM in this case are truly stakeholders might be a good way to improve the long-term sustainability of the software that really is the, the workhorse in terms of collecting the data that flows through and forms the substance of all the other services and research output that we enable. So um, another, another uh, potential idea that we've had is as, as a library, um, we're starting to think from an archival perspective about perhaps accessioning some of these data sets uh, and maybe including them on our archive space instance and really viewing them in that way. So um, last but not least, we would encourage you to reach out with any thoughts, questions, ideas that you have. We have an email address for this project, it's SFM at gw.edu. And the two main links we'd like to leave you with are uh, the link to our social feed manager project. It's not the software itself, but it's everything about the project. And then you can view uh, and even download some of the data that we've posted at tweet sets. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you. And we hope to see you in person at future CNIs.